Hey, welcome back to another episode of Harness Your Intuitive Superpowers, where you learn energy secrets that busy professionals need in order to thrive beyond mediocrity and embody extraordinary success and abundance. I'm your host, Dr. Amir Hall. I'm so excited to introduce you to this amazing, incredible woman, Meredith Willits. Meredith is an intuitive life coach. She's a mom of four amazing kids. She's an author and she's a thought leader. She's the host of Meredith with a Y podcast that ranks in the top one and a half percent of the most listened to podcasts in the entire world. She has developed an impressive and loyal global following with over one and a half million TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram followers. She is the author of Mindset Mastermind. That's 10 steps to change your life and your soul forever. And she works with a wide range of people, everybody from somebody in their 20s to CEOs of Fortune 500 companies to help each person heal and find the life they always dreamt about. She's married and she's a mom of four amazing kids from age 12 to 26. And Meredith brings an amazing gift for you. So make sure you stay to the end. Click that link and get her gift. And so with that said, and let's welcome Meredith Willits. I can welcome my dear Meredith. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk to all of your guests that are watching today. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself on your journey? Where do you live? Let's start there. So I live in the Chicago suburbs. I moved here six years ago with my husband for his job. And as I always tell him, you think it's for your job, but it's actually for my growth. <laughs> I <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because if I sat here and thought I was like tra traipsing around my behind my husband everywhere he had to go for his job, it would be probably debilitating. So I just pretend like it's for me, which I actually do find that it has worked in my favor because I get to show up and reinvent myself and decide who I'm going to be every time we move. So I make it a positive. So do you travel a lot? Like, have you moved a lot? So we met actually when he lived in, he had moved to Cleveland. I, I'm, my hometown is Cleveland area. And that's where we met. And then after a short while, he got a job in Philadelphia. Then we got married. Then I moved to Philadelphia. Then we moved back to Cleveland. Then we moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And now we're in Chicago. So Quite a few moves, lots of transition, lots of figuring out who I am and finding new doctors and friends, which can be challenging. Stressful, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's yeah, it is. And it was always a matter of him leaving before us because he would start this job and then I would have to pack up the house, finish everything off, sell the house, and then we could move on. And so a lot on my shoulders as a mom, I have four children. We have four children. And uh, so it was a lot. So I guess I had to like in my mind's eye make it about me because otherwise who wants to move for their husband over and over again? <laughs> Back in the 50s and 60s, that was just the way it was. <laughs> you were moving, but I think that's admirable. So you're, that's your career is re resetting up the house. And selling a, you're a jack of all trades. Part-time job. And we've been in Chicago here now for six years, which has been fantastic. I really love, especially the women in Chicagoland area. I think they're really heavy hitters. They're powerful entrepreneurs, intelligent, like they're doing all the things, really inspirational. So as far as, not that those aren't, those things aren't found in other places. I just find it to be very powerful here in Chicago as the women of all ages doing all the different things. Like I, I was telling a story one time sitting on the sidelines of my son's baseball game. And I was literally with an author, a top lawyer in Chicago, a top HR person in the country, a rheumatologist and myself. And it's, okay, I guess I need to start a podcast or I need to write a book. Like I need to do, there's just something about being around women who are doing it that makes you believe that even though I'm a mom, even though I'm a wife, even though I can do it too. It, it's inspiring to be around women like that. And it's like an energetic force field that sort of pulls everybody along. It raises your vibration and you want to be better. You want to do more and be more creative. And it just gives you new ideas, doesn't it? By being around people that are. Totally gives you new ideas. And I've always been the type of person, which is how I got into even my line of work, 
which is psychic medium, intuitive life coaching, podcast host, and author, I've always been of the mindset, if I can see it, if I can imagine it, then I can do it. I can learn it. Like I, when I got into mediumship, I was literally laying in bed watching Nancy Grace. And I'm like, I wonder if I could tap into this dead person. I'm like, I want to do that. And I would watch like Long Island Media and be like, I want to do that. And I had zero experience with mediumship or psychic or anything. I was a normal person. I had worked at a law firm, right? I was a mother of four. And I'm like, I want to do that. And I taught myself how to be a medium, how to do psychic work. Like I learned, I found ways to tap into that part of self. I believe we all have that ability. It's just whether we tap into it or not. And I did. And I, so I tell myself now, if I can teach myself to talk to dead people, I could literally do anything. Like that is to me would be the most difficult things of things to do because it's so different, right? And I do believe that if you're around people that show you that things are possible, which is why I think mentoring is super important. I feel like you, you can do anything if you can imagine it. What's it? Manifestation, right? Manifesting. And is intuition imagination? That would be, I'm just getting that thought, like the question, is it different or is it an aspect of our imagination? So when I think of intuition, so like intuition in the present, so that's intuition is more, in my opinion, like a present future situation where you're like, is this a good idea to purchase this home? Like intuitively, is this a a path that I should take. To me, that's found in the gut. It's found in the sinew of your muscles and your frequency of your body of how does it feel in my body? Take it out of my head, which is programming from childhood, right? Programming from society. Play it safe. Cash is king. Keep your money in the bank. Don't put yourself out there. That's the programming from society. But if you go into your physical body is a million times more intelligent than your brain will ever be. Your brain is only it's user error, right? It's only as good as the last bit of information that it received. But your physical body, that is the thing that's picking up all the people around you. It's picking up, should we keep going straight on this road or should we turn left? It's picking up everything. Your physical body is picking up everything around you all of the time. It's picking up the meal that you're about to eat. That's why people pray with their hands over their food. Their hands are telling their mouth the saliva that should happen, the teeth that should be activated, the tongue that should be worked with, the different body parts that need to be activated as far as your pancreas or your liver, because this hands prayer over food is the information my hands are picking up so that my body can digest this food. So just like the body is digesting the food and da, 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 picking all that up, right? Your physical body is also the intelligent force that you should be listening to quite actually, which is what is in the gut, right? Go to the gut. God lives in the gut, all that good stuff instead of your brain, right? And so that to me is that intuition. When you talk about your imagination. Well, it's a perception. It's a perception that we're picking up these signals with intuition. And I guess this is, we could really go down some rabbit holes here, but, yeah. and I love it. But the, see, when I say imagination, to me, that's my clairvoyance that's picking up. That's yeah. my visual perce perceptions that are being activated versus that feeling, which is our gut feeling, is being triggered with the physical body. It's with clairsentience. Yeah. Yeah. So when I imagine so Albert Einstein, right, he said the imagination is more powerful than anything on this planet. And I think a lot of people think they are imagining something. I, am, I think I imagine my grandmother visiting. I think I imagine smelling my grandpa's pipe, right? So imagination. Yeah, I'm losing my mind because I know he's not here. Because he that, passed away 10 years ago. And that right. tobacco had a sweet smell. And yes. it, nobody been smoking in here. Yes, yes. And so. I think that the imagination can be like a double-edged sword. Like you think you're imagining it, but you're really not. But also in the imagination is where we get the channeled messages. I always say no one's ever had an idea in their whole life. All of it is channeling. All right. of it is channeling from higher self or from our guides or from God, whatever. From whatever past you lives, want. future from, lives. Exactly. And, and each other, we're sending radio signals yep. nonstop. Yep. So we're just walking antennas. And so what you're talking about, the imagination slash clairvoyance, the mind of seeing, right? 
is I think all of it goes together and we're getting downloads that we like, we might hear a song, we might hear or go, you know what, I should send my friend an email or I should send that person a text. We think it's in our imagination, but that's also part and parcel to clairvoyance. But we don't believe signals. Yeah, Yeah, but we don't. Most of us don't believe that we're clairvoyant. We just think it's just everybody is. That's the funny part. Everybody is. Everybody is. And it's a beautiful thing when you can learn to lean into that and have faith inside of like your clairvoyance. And I think that the more you get outside of your ego and that negative voice in your head, the one of, you know, your mother or father or society of your third grade teacher, or, you know, the bully in seventh grade, when we can get out of that voice in our head of ego and fear and lean into what you're speaking about here, which is your imagination and the channeled messages and your spirit guides and your higher self whispering to you, no, you can buy that house. It's going to be okay. I think that's when the magic really starts happening in a person's life. The magic. And even if it's not going to be okay, what lessons are you learning? Because we often forget that many of us don't even know that we are here on a journey. We are here to make mistakes because it's a lesson. It's not really a mistake. Yeah. I always say get paralyzed. We like a dog with their all force just like walking there. Yeah. I always tell people, like, is it a lesson or a blessing? And usually it's both. I got breast cancer, diagnosed with breast cancer a few years back. And as you're going through that, you have two choices. You can either begrudge it the whole way, fighting, kicking and screaming, or you could go, damn it, I am going to find the lesson in this and I'm going to make it work. I'm going to use this to change my life for the better. And for me, it was to start asking people for help and self-care and not be the superwoman that I was trained to be from childhood is to do it all on my own. And I didn't have to do it all on my own. I wasn't expected to do it all on my own. And I learned to ask my husband, can you sit next to me? I'm scared. Can you just lay there and not rub all the skin off the top of my hand? You know how men tend to just keep rubbing. And you're like, okay, I have no skin on top of my hand. Can you just sell that? And to ask for what I need and want in that moment. Or can you just not talk right now? You don't need to fix it. And that was a huge lesson for me is to start recognizing when I'm imbalanced, you know, when I'm overwhelmed, which is a sign of imbalance, when I'm turning towards unhealthy practices, eating, drinking, smoking, not walking, whatever it is, right? That whatever you're th- over shopping, whatever your thing is a sign of imbalance. And so I started paying attention to when my life was balanced or imbalanced because I used that time of breast cancer to pay attention to bad habits, bad habits mentally, bad habits emotionally, physically, whatever the thing is. And so as to your point, everything can be used as a lesson and a blessing and almost always both, 100%. Absolutely. It's all a journey. So how did you get started? You said that you taught yourself, but I'm blown away that you have half a million followers and growing as we talk on TikTok. How did all that begin for you? It's fascinating to me. So I was doing this, thank you though. I was doing this mentorship program in this group and I just felt very stagnant in my career. I felt like nothing was really hitting like if I don't know if you've ever anyone out there has ever heard that you just feel like you're not getting where you want to go you're just spinning your wheels me. it's nothing yeah. kind of groundhog day yeah and you're I'm like I know I'm good at this I know I've got a lot of good t- stuff to talk about and I literally got off that mentorship call and I walked around the corner from where I'm sitting in this moment I sat in my closet and I started making TikToks explaining how I got to where I was at how I taught myself mediumship and psychic work. And it just took off from there. And I told myself, there's billions of people on this app. Why not me? Why not me? I know I've got great information. I know I help people every day in appointment. I know I've done the work, right? I know that I am honest. I know that the reason that I have been given the gifts or the ability to touch mediumship is to prove to myself that there is an afterlife so that I 
understood that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Like I'm the hand on the stove kind of girl. Like I need to touch it to make sure it's hot. So mediumship was allowing me to touch it to make sure it's hot. So like I would have never told people beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's an afterlife and that there's more that you are in, you are an eternal being, right? I had to touch the stove. And so the universe let me touch the stove, i.e. touch dead people. Because I know that whatever I speak about, my hand, my, my feet are held to that fire, the same fire that I needed to touch. And so for me to speak on a subject, unfortunately, a lot of times I have to go through it. I have to believe in it. Because if I'm going to talk to people about it, I have to expect that I'm going to, I could be possibly interviewed about it. I have to expect that I could be called out on it. So I need to believe it. And so I, I guess I was just fortunate enough that, that the universe was listening and wanted my voice to be heard in some way, shape or form. I just see it as you were trusting your intuition and you just let go. There was a moment totally. in time where you just unplugged and just said, I'm going. 1,000. And yep. yeah. And it's like, sometimes we have to get sick. Sometimes people have to die in our life or relationships fall apart. So sometimes we have these crises and maybe you've had multiple layers in that, but you finally went, hey, what do I have to lose here? I've got goosebumps as I'm saying that. I remember coming home and buying a Lexus after I had a near-death experience because I was sick of that Camry and I'm like, fuck it. I want yep. a Lexus. That's in my yep. heart. I just want, that was years and years ago, but it's just like, we thought we have to get out of our own way because yeah. we're the ones holding ourselves back. Yeah. I, I, and like you, we were talking in my TikToks or Instagram or whatever it is that I'm doing. They're not scripted. They're like, I was telling you before we hit, <clears throat> excuse me, record. Usually my teeth have coffee on them and my mascara <laughs> down the front of my face. And I might even have a hood on because my hair is so bad. And I just hit record. And a lot of times I will tell you, I listen back to some of my videos and I'm like, I don't even remember saying that. I don't remember making that video. It just came out. And that's and to me the magic. And people just relate to it. And I'm here for that. I'm here for if I'm struggling with something, or I'm having an epiphany of something, or I'm having clarity of something, right? It would be insane for me to believe that I'm the only one going through that. And so if I can share it to anyone, and maybe they resonate with what I'm talking about, maybe that'll help them. This Wednesday, what is that? That's going to be the 9th of, of August, will be four weeks of completely not drinking any alcohol. And I will tell you the amount of clarity that is coming in from removing that from my life and not having that as an anchor or a distraction or a disassociation or like whatever it is, like I'm sharing that on my podcast. I'm sharing that on social media because if there's someone out there that might be like, I'm really accepting this crappy job or this bad relationship or not healthy boundaries because at the end of the day, I know I can drown myself in a bottle of wine. And they hear my story of how I'm choosing, not because I was an alcoholic, but I do believe that if you partake in alcohol more than one day a week, you might be delving into an issue. And it um, delves the senses and not to mention, yeah. besides our d deceased loved ones that are on the other side of the veil, we're just opening up to all kinds of entities that exist that most people don't like to, they feel uncomfortable talking about. Them. Yeah. But that's and what I, I see. I literally see them come in. Yeah. yeah. And I think that you're inviting negative entities of the human form. Absolutely. You're, they you're don't inviting come spirits for nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you're, but you're inviting the bad job that you wouldn't tolerate if you weren't allowed to dive into a six pack at the end of the day. And so I, I tend to share things in the immediate that I am personally seeing or noticing or going through. And I'm following my intuition on that. I'm following my gut and going, okay, you need to talk about this right now, even though it might be scary or embarrassing or whatever. And so that is why I believe that I've had success is because I don't overthink it. I don't think, do you look good? Or uh, are your teeth brushed for the day? Or whatever it is, or is it going to make sense to everyone? I just go for it and it's positive. And I think that's why it's worked. And I think that's why a 50 year old housewife of four, I have over, over 1.4 million followers across oh, social media. I thought media. it was one point. I'm sorry. It was wrong. I thought it was. Well, TikTok is like 620, but oh, then Instagram okay. and Facebook are around 700,000 total. 
So like between the three platforms, those are what I'm on. Yeah. And so I just, I, there's something that people relate to. And I think that's working. I think it's so powerful because whatever it is that we're striving for in our life, we're holding ourselves back by looking good or having it perfect. We're also caught up in, because we're programmed, right? To, to look good, to sound good, to do the best we can. And how are we competing with others or com comparing with others? And then what's the secret? There is no secret. You showed Shut up and you threw caution to the wind and you're just being yourself. How yeah. about that? What a novel idea for us to just be ourselves. And I think that's why men actually probably get ahead much faster and easier than women because they don't have to do the makeup and the lipstick and the hair and the heels and the nylons and shaving every part of their damn bodies. They literally just can continue to get older, continue to have gray and, and black hair and beards or no skin. beard. Like they yeah. just can show up and be themselves. And that is what is expected. Whereas women, when we don't show up with a full face, it's, oh, you okay? Is everything all right? Gee, did you get a good night's sleep? Did you get a good night's sleep? <laughs> and so there's a much different expectations. Like men can be gain weight and women, it's, oh, she let herself go. There's a lot of different societally yeah. acceptable versions of women that we're, I feel like we're changing now. And I think that me showing up at six o'clock in the morning with a hoodie on and just showing up as myself I think that's helpful. I think that as we change the body image in magazines and with models and all that, that's helpful to allow women to know that they can show up and they can use their intuition and decide to show up in the way that they want to. And that's all right. I think that we're changing that. It's so powerful. Yeah. In terms of how do we, you said you just unplugged, you just got to this point one day and you were inspired or whatever happened in your mastermind, it's just, okay, I'm shifting. It yeah. was like, I, cause it's like a big old shift. It did is. you say that you felt that in the moment? I did. In the moment, I literally felt, screw it. Like you said, like, just screw it. There's no, there's no how to book. I was going to say, what are your tricks? What are your tips and your tricks? Now I have more strategy. of a tips and tricks. Now I do have more of a strategy. In the beginning, just you have to find, if you watch TikTok, so many people that are on there are doing it different ways. Some people have tons of green screen or video. Or they're doing lots of different ways to hook you in and to be a good performer, if you will. Mine tends to be a hook at the beginning. I figure I've got about two to three seconds to get you to watch my video. And so as I'm coming up with what is it that I'm trying to relate to people, relate to people in this video. And so I come up with a topic of what, that happens to be swirling around my mind. And then I try to come up with a one to three second hook that will make you want to watch my video. The funny thing, like I was saying is, the ones that there's one recently that has over a million views right now. It's so haphazard. It's the most haphazard video. And I, my sunglasses are in my hair. My hair's literally sticking out to both sides. I'm like, I don't color my hair. And I was like doing like showing this. And I don't either. It's <laughs> over a million views. <laughs> and I, it is just such a, it's such a wacky video. But yeah, I think that now I have more of a formula, but in the beginning, like just, I think you find yourself, I think there's, social media is for you. So social media is about finding yourself. Because I love that. People say the weirdest, most horrible shit to you on social media, and you need to just say, I don't care. And then that kind of like bleeds into your normal life of like, your opinion, I appreciate, but my opinion is more important. The my opinion of yeah. me is more important than your opinion of me. And somehow social media gets you there. It gets you there in a very powerful way. And, the, and when you hit that spot that your opinion of you is more important than anyone else's opinion of you, the volume of your mother's and your father's and society's voice is turned down. That volume is turned down. And when that volume turns down, your intuition turns up. Yourself that came to this planet to do something, whatever that something is, maybe it's raise kids or open a, I don't know, a company or whatever, talk to you. 
that something gets louder and it gets fearless because the other person, the other entities, the other all's voice turns down for once. And I think that's when you finally start walking in your shoes down your path to become the person that you were meant to be on this planet. I was a chubby, braces wearing, two friend having, probably tirelessly made fun of, didn't kiss a boy till I was a sophomore in high school kid. And I'm sure a lot of people that watch me on Facebook from high school and whatnot probably are like, who is this person? She wasn't the Meredith that we knew in, in, in school. And we can't get to where we want to be making everyone that we went to school with or live next to or even our families happy. Because if they know you now, if they knew you then, they don't know you though now. And I did a whole podcast on this. Because if I would have stayed in my hometown, there's no way I'd be the person I am right now. 100%. Oh, I, can, I can ditto that. Yeah. I, in fact, yeah. They don't know me at all. They don't know you. They have no idea. Like the people that knew you then, uh -huh. they're like, who is this person? And you could have never become this person had you no. stayed under their gaze. And, and I often said that. I could yeah. never be where I'm at today had I stayed where I was. No, because you would live under their gaze. Absolutely. Of, of the chubby kid. And, and limits. And limits. Based on their perspective and what's possible. What's possible. And, yeah. And that goes back to the beginning of our conversation is every time I've moved, I've gotten to level up. I've gotten to become someone that I wasn't maybe comfortable being in the last place that I lived. And I've always strived to be the, my best self. But I think when we have that opportunity to go, okay, I'm going to leave that behind. You know, and that these people aren't going to know maybe that about me. And there's no gaze. What's her name? Oh, darn it. I can't think of her name. She wrote The Bluest Eye. I'm having a brain fart. She talks about the gaze of the white person. And there's a lot of people that talk about the gaze of, of men, right? Like we dress for men. Women dress for the gaze of a man's eye. And she was talking about the gaze of how she wrote books without the gaze of a white person watching. And I found that fascinating of the idea of the gaze of someone. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, but it so does. It so plays into, if you're going to a luncheon, Maya Angelou, geez, always, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when like you walk- it's coming out, in through heaven. Geez, oh, Peach is, hello, <laughs> Meredith. But when you like go to a luncheon, do you dress for yourself or do you dress for the women that you're going to be seeing? And it's hard to separate yourself from that. But I will say, I think social media allows you to find yourself very quickly because if you aren't authentic and if you do, if you do listen to the hype of people telling you you're beautiful or you're stupid or you're smart or whatever it is, if you listen to any of that, it's just your ego being built up. And so when you have the power to finally start removing all of that, you start to finally hear your own voice, which is your intuition. I love it. I was just going to say, yeah. So how do we, how can we tap into it? It sounds easy based on what you're describing. Oh, I just shifted, right? One day I just shifted. But it sounds like you've been on a path of personal development for quite some time. Oh, yeah. Until we're dead and then beyond. So the first thing I like to do when I have a client is if they are having a hard time and they're trying to really find their intuition, right? They're trying to start listening to their higher self. What I will tell them is to name the voice in their head and recognize when it's speaking to them. And the voice in their head is going to t make them small. It's going to criticize. It's going to make them feel bad about their relationships or what they're doing in life. And so that's the programming of the brain. Uh, it comes up as your butt's too big. You can never do that job. That outfit looks stupid on you. Dress your age, whatever it is, right? So that's how it's scary. It makes you small and it's your ego. And your ego is programmed from all the things that came before that moment of your life. Church, school, parents, doesn't matter. And so I like to actually name that voice in your head something that is not your name. And people give me shit about this because they're like, oh, you're creating multiple personalities. It's No, you're not. There are different um, aspects of yourself, right? It's, and it's not even yourself. You're listening to that voice. You are the pause that is listening to that voice. Power of now, Eckhart Tolle. 
Yep. So that is 101, right? Eckhart Tolle 101. And so when you recognize that is not Meredith. So mine is Vicky. So sorry to all the Vickies out there that are listening to this. I have named mine Vicky, parlayed from Real Housewives of Orange County. And so <laughs> Vicky is a bitch. And Vicky <laughs> gets involved in everything that I do. Vicky's like right now, like Meredith, your hair doesn't look good. Meredith, your nose is too yeah. shiny. Vicky shows up like she wants to show up, right? And so I just, from your lips to God's ears. So like in the beginning, you need to do this out of your mouth to reprogram the mind. And so I'll be like, shut up, Vicky. I'm not listening to you. My nose looks fine right now. Or my hair is just (laughs) fine. I don't really care about my hair. It's fine. I'm here to talk to people. And so when I can shut down Vicky, the voice in my head, then my intuition gets louder, right? My spirit guides get louder. My higher self gets louder. My intuition, my clairvoyance, my clairsentience, my clairaudience, all of my clairs, my everything that is spirit-based, love-based, faith-based, not faith religion, but active faith, meaning wherever I'm at is exactly where I'm supposed to be. That gets louder because my fear voice is getting quieter. It knows I'm on to it. I, it knows that I know that is not who I am that is a part of programming that really has nothing to do with me. My mom's bullshit that is in my head has nothing to do with my path in this life. And so my mom saying X, Y, Z is actually a deterrent from me listening to my intuition and moving forward on my path. And so naming the voice, realizing it's not you, realizing you're the listener, you're the discerner, do I want to listen to that? And I always tell people, as soon as you get Vicky off of the fact that your those jeans don't look good in you and that you should go for that job and you should start be, painting in your spare time, she will show up or he will show up six months later and go, your husband doesn't even want to come home and see you. That's why he's out right now. And you're like, he doesn't want to come see me? Wait a minute. Are you right? And then you're like, shut up, Vicky. My husband's at a work dinner. Like, why are you doing? Why are you getting involved? And so that is that point. Your friends didn't even invite you to that birthday party. It's because you were in California. Like, when, like they knew you were going to be in California. And, but that's how the ego works. It's constantly trying to mitigate pain. And so if we don't go for that job, we're mitigating pain because we're staying safe in our house. If we don't, if we don't try something new with our hair, we're staying safe by being where we've been our whole lives. And as we shut that down, again, in the beginning, out of your mouth, shut up, Vicky. I'm not listening to you. Eventually, you can do it in your head, even if you have to excuse yourself and go to the bathroom and be like, you know what, Vicky, I'm not listening to you today, or whatever you want to name it. But then that intuition, that beautiful intuition that says, go ahead, send your mom a text, tell her you love her, or try that thing. Start doing that. Start doing this. Go make some TikToks. Just yeah. Show- Just show up in, in whatever way that might be to smile at a person. Instead of looking at the ground when you walk by. Yeah. I think I freak people out because I look at them dead in the eye all the time. Like when I'm at, like, I look people, I'm like, thank you so much. And I think they, because people are just so in their phones. Well, you're saying hello to their spirit when you do that. And they feel it. You don't even have to. They might not know until they walk past you. Something happened there. (laughs) Exactly. 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 I think when, when we shut down that voice. That's when we get to show up. That's when the magic happens. That's when it gets really good. Because that voice will mess up your whole life. So I'm sure as a TikTok celebrity, you've had skeptics or bad negative things said to you. You touched on that. But in terms of intuition and being able to listen to it or hear and that voice that you talk about, Vicky, that we all have an aspect of, what would you say to that person doubting you and thinking you're just a little bit loopy here? They're not, they're not, they can't hear me. And I'm okay with that. I'm not here to change anyone's mind. Just like there's a lot of people on this planet that I can't hear because of a different frequency. Maybe they're really hateful or really negative, and it's very uncomfortable. If you've ever been around someone that makes you very uncomfortable. Yeah, the um, doom and gloomers. Yeah. are just everybody talking about all the bad things that are happening. Yeah, and there's a part of it that we need to be safe, um, but then there's a part of it, if you've ever been in the car with someone that has road rage, it's super uncomfortable, right? Or that's the, hey, how you doing? I got up and took a bite out of a shit sandwich. Let's live in the dream. You know, those people, right? I don't want... 
<laughs> 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 no dream. I don't I don't want to deal with that. And I don't have to. And to me, like to, to them, I'm probably like Pollyanna or I'm like flaky or I'm like, oh, I got people like you're actually listening to a psychic on TikTok. People like someone just made that comment recently. They're not for me. We're living on different planets and I'm okay with that. Like, I'm just going to keep showing up. And maybe if I end up on their For You page over and over, maybe something I will say will resonate with them and then they'll revisit me. But I'm okay now at 50. I'm okay now at 50 with realizing that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And that is a freedom that I wish I had much sooner in life because the people pleasing and trying to be everyone's cup of tea and spin those plates and make the world me be okay based on the world being okay with me, that day is over. And I will never get to where I want to go by by speaking or trying to speak to everyone. It's a factor of age getting through different decades that we get finally... Maybe it's a health challenge. Maybe it's all the moves that you've made. What do you suppose, or all of it, that helps you get to that place of, I just don't care anymore? I think that I think that it could be a lot of realizations. I think age has something to do with it. There's a freedom to it. With life to being experience. Older. Yeah, there's a freedom to being older. There's a freedom to the time that we're living in right now with information sharing. There's a freedom to choosing to be with my partner every day versus feeling I have have to be married to him. I don't know. There's a freedom to choice. I don't know. I think that people could pick this up at like my daughter. She's 24 and she's very close to getting this. Like she's very close to my self. Point, I'm wondering. Yeah. Self-empowerment. I think that these concepts are not concepts that maybe you and I had when we were younger. I didn't have in my mind a lot of options when I was in my 20s. It was get married, have kids, being taken care of, be a great housewife, be a great mother. Those were pretty much my, in my mind's eye, my options. Now, granted, that wasn't everyone around me, but that was what I saw as being my options. And that comes with a lot of people pleasing. You better be a damn good wife. You better be a damn good mother. The house better be clean. You better have your shit together. Everything had to do with my value, had to do with external validation, right? Nothing had to do with me. Nothing had to do with my happiness. Nothing had to do with, I woke up this morning, so I'm worthy. I am worthy because I am a good mother. I am worthy because I made dinner tonight. And so as long as those ducks were in a row, then I found my value. Whereas with social media and information sharing, you and I and the rest of the world, our 24-year-olds, our 70-year-olds, are having access and getting access to information sharing that you would probably only get if you had a PhD in psychology. Concepts like gaslighting and narcissism and love bombing and all of these amazing, this language that we didn't or wouldn't have access to without social media gives us power because now, like I said, if you can see it, if you can see it, now I can do it, right? And now no I have awareness. Yeah, yeah I'm aware. awareness. Great. So when my husband, he's a state, like he, my husband is the greatest man to walk the earth because he has to deal with this in the most positive way. But <laughs> now when he gaslights me, I can call his ass out on it instead of just thinking I've lost my mind. I'm like, I'm gaslighting. He's like, I'm not gaslighting you. I'm like, oh, yes, you are. Because X and Y and Z are gaslighting. He's like, yes, you are. Or if he says something, <laughs> we've got this. Because I'm spending a lot of time in Michigan redoing this house. And I said, how's the kids doing with grades? And he's like, we got this. Which I know what he's saying is you don't have to worry about it. But what I'm saying is that's great and all, but I'm still asking. You don't need to isolate me or alienate me from just because you've got this. Like all of these different things are empowering, especially women in marginalized communities to recognize that we are being marginalized. And or clear communication. It's a higher level of awareness. Yes. I don't know. Are we being marginalized or are we just standing in the shadows? So it's time to come forward and go, I get it. You're, we're not playing this game anymore. Yeah. They're saying I've heard. Uh, that this year, this decade is going to be the decade of divorce. 
Wow. Because women are recognizing like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Like, I'm taking care of the kids. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this and doing that. I don't need, I don't need a partner to do this. I don't need to be married to do this. It's just, we're in a very different day and age. And I love being married. I think there's an energy to marriage that I think is fantastic. I love it. I actually just teased my husband about this morning. I said, you're lucky that divorce takes a while or I would just uh, divorce you this morning because I asked him to go for a walk. And he said, I don't want to go for a walk, which he ended up going, by the way. So I was just teasing him. But I think that we're definitely going through a shift. And I believe that this shift is because of information sharing. Yeah. 100%. And showing up. Yeah. So I, gosh, I can see that you and I could talk for hours on this stuff. And it's such a light merit. You're just such a wealth of information, not to mention you're a powerful channel and uh, medium. But I understand that you come bearing gifts today. Would you like to share with us? what that is? I have a a class that runs usually $99. So you can get that for free. And that is the way to change your life forever. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. So where do we wrap this up, Meredith? Is there one last bit of information? Maybe you've got a message for us today. Is there something that you would like to share with our audience as your final comments? Yeah, it was funny. This morning I woke up and I was singing the song Fear by Blue October, which is one of my favorite bands. And so I'm going to leave you with this, that fear is for entertainment purposes only. You are an infinite being. If you are, you always have been and you always will be. And so when you are in the space of fear, it's actually keeping you from your freedom. And so any fear that comes into your view, right? If you can get past that, no matter what that thing is, that is actually your doorway to freedom. And so tap into those fears that come up in your daily life, be it putting yourself out there or wearing a certain clothing or hairstyle or trying something new or roller skating, doesn't matter what it is, that fear is your freedom. And so tap into that because that's a great button to push. Oh, wow. That is so profound. Thank you so much for that. I just am overwhelmed with your incredible beauty and your wisdom and your incredible connection to the divine. It's really beautiful. I'm not overwhelmed in that I'm going to lose it here, but I'm overwhelmed with the intensity of it. It's awesome. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with me and with our listeners. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I really appreciate you you choosing me to be on this panel. So it's my pleasure. And so everybody, thank you to you for tuning in, for joining us here, and for sharing your light. And just keep shining bright. And I'll see you on the next episode.